The Phillies' Reese Hoskins starts his trip around the bases after blasting a two-run home run off Washington's Ryan Madsen on Thursday night. Eric Hartline, USA Today Sports, Philadelphia, Washington Nationals manager Dave Martinez hoped Wednesday's off day, his team's final respite until the All-Star break in nearly three weeks, would rejuvenate his club. He hoped the break would ignite their offense and cleanse their sloppiness. He hoped to see more urgency as they began a four-game set against the Philadelphia Phillies. If a series in late June could be called pivotal, this matchup against fellow challengers for the NL East title fit the bill. We always talk about the little things, Martinez said before Thursday's series opener, and I really want to see it all come together in these next couple weeks. It didn't all come together. The Nationals lost again, 4-3, for the tenth time in 13 games. The defeat featured more anemic offense and a run, costing error and dropped Washington to 41-38, two games behind second place Philadelphia, 43-36. The Nationals jumped ahead thanks to Pedro Severino's RBI double in the second inning, which gave them their first run since Sunday night following 19 scoreless innings. It was Severino's fourth hit in 53 plate appearances in June and just his second extra base hit since May 21, a span of 79 plate appearances. But Washington isn't counting on Severino, a light-hitting catcher, to produce runs. For the Nationals to fulfill their run-scoring potential, they need Bryce Harper to veer back onto his all-star track and snap out from his June blues. And to do that, he must remain healthy. For a few moments in the third inning, a ball fouled off his right foot threatened to make his nightmare June an unmitigated disaster. Harper dropped to the ground immediately in clear pain for a few seconds before he tried standing up and walking it off. He couldn't, so trainer Paul Lassar jogged out to check on him. Martinez soon followed as Harper bent over to show Lassar where the ball landed. He tried to put weight on the foot a few times and failed. But he refused to exit the game. It smoked him, too. It was Lau, I heard it, Martinez said. I didn't want to go out there because I know how he gets. He was hurting pretty good, too, but he was adamant about staying in the game. He was also, however, clearly uncomfortable. He could barely stand up as he hobbled to the batter's box, crouching again before reaching the plate. Wang at the next pitch fouling it off, and crouched again in discomfort. Then he took strike three looking before limping to the dugout and making taking a slow stroll to right field for the bottom of the frame. Harper whacked a leadoff line drive single to left field in his next at bat. Anthony Rendon then singled and the Nationals were scheming down a run. But the inning would end with more disappointment. Juan Soto popped out in foul territory. Daniel Murphy then flied out to right field. It was deep enough to advance an apparently able-footed Harper to third base, but T.R.E.A. Turner followed with a strikeout, letting Phillies right-hander Aaron Nola, a likely all-star who allowed one run over seven and two-thirds innings, off the hook. Maybe having a little more fun would help, for sure, Turner said. Right now, we are kind of pressing for somebody to step up and do something, and then kind of looking and when it doesn't happen it's like, man, that was our chance. Tanner Rourke's arrival at Citizens Bank Park caused a stir in the visitors' clubhouse. He had shaven his beard and two mutton chops and a mustache. He resembled a Civil War reenactor, and his teammates cackled. Rourke told pitching coach Derek Lilliquist he wanted to make the facial hair change before the start and Lilliquist dared him to. It was an ambitious makeover to flip his recent fortunes. His previous two starts were troubling. He logged 210 pitches in them, across just eight and a third innings, just when the Nationals needed him to step up with Jeremy Hellickson and Steven Strasburg on the disabled list. Rourke danced out of trouble in the first inning, leaving the bases loaded, but it cost him 28 pitches. By the end of the third, his pitch count was at 62. The Phillies tallied two runs, the first derived from Michael A. 
Taylor bobbling a ball in center field in the third inning, and put a runner on base in each of Rourke's six innings. But they didn't tack on another run. Chances were squandered and Rourke, after settling down, gave Washington a chance to win the game. I felt a lot better. Rourke said. Just velocity I felt like was a tick more. Just being consistent with that. Rourke's fight was rendered moot once Ryan Madsen, a former Philly making his first appearance at Citizens Bank Park since the 2011 playoffs, took the mound for the seventh inning. Madsen surrendered a leadoff single to Cesar Hernandez before Reese Hoskins smacked a two-run home run, widening the gap to 4-1. To it was a deficit the Nationals had two innings to erase. Washington scored six runs in three innings in a comeback victory over the Phillies at Nationals Park on Sunday. But that was an aberration. The Nationals have scored 20 runs in their past eight games and the fewest runs in the National League in June. They scored two runs in the ninth inning, when they seemed to display more urgency and focus in generating better at-bats, but failed to add more. They are currently a feeble offensive team with a knack for mistakes at inopportune times. Their manager hoped that would change Thursday, but it was more of the same. We're going to snap out of this, we really are. Martinez insisted. It's just a matter of